Friday because this Friday, this Friday, we are meeting at PEP headquarters, 19 Stanmore Avenue. And it is not just PEP, it is every citizen of Trinidad and Tobago. You don't have to be a member of the Progressive Empowerment Party to come and walk with us. You don't have to. It would be nice if you join the party because our party gives you a real political vehicle, a real chance at standing up against the oligarchs that have ruined this country. But we will hold our hand there. Let's talk about going to the Prime Minister on Friday lunchtime. We are walking from at 11, so we're meeting at 10, and 11 o'clock we're moving off from PEP's headquarters, walking up to the Savannah, around till we reach QRC, to the Prime Minister's office. That is this Friday morning here. And we are doing it on Friday, on the same day with the rest of the reflection, because a lot of our members would be staying home. And we're saying, instead of just staying home to rest and reflect, let us go and serve to the Prime Minister a request from the people of Trinidad and Tobago that he admits that he has failed, that he instructs Her Excellency the President to call an election, to dissolve the parliament, it is time. Somebody said to me today that the PEP has to wait two years to build. And I, I told that person two things. One, nothing happens before it's time. If the PEP is meant to win, it will win now, it will win two years from now, it will win ten years from now. Two, and more importantly, if we do not rescue Trinidad and Tobago now, there will be nothing worth saving two years from now. These people are on a mad rush to take what they could take. That is what is going on. That's what, that is what is happening right now. And we, we are all that stands between it and certainty. Give me one minute. Sorry about that. I started doing a million things one time. I need, I need, I need, um, I need an intern or an assistant. I need somebody to help me. Because there's been so much things happening at one time. So much information coming from multiple sources all at the same time. Anyway, Friday, this Friday. Yeah? This Friday morning. And, and tonight's video is to encourage all of you all of you watching the video, share this video, share the other videos, share the information. I, Gary Blake, I'm waiting for all of that. Trinidad and Tobago, 
Trinidad and Tobago needs to stand for itself. We don't have to fight nothing and burn down nothing and all that crap. We don't have to do those things. But we have to at least be willing to stand up. People cannot continue to say that we've never fought for our country and they're not even willing to come out of their house. Too many of us have all the answers for what other people are doing. And like they say, like the old people say, monkey don't see their own tail. We're not seeing, we're not doing nothing. Or worse, we're contributing by telling people, that can't work, that ain't gonna work. Why? Why? You know why? Because of the perception of the people who think it can't work. Do not come out and put their power behind it. When Marley McDonald jumped out herself today to threaten the people of Trinidad Tobago, when I read that, I literally got outraged. And I couldn't believe that a government minister was so full of foolishness that she would try to threaten the people. And I wrote on Facebook, and I would like to read it to you. What foolishness did I just read in the paper? Who the ass this mad woman thinks she is to be threatening my people? Why don't you go and lock up Maxi Coffee for drawing a salary for over a year absent from work? Why don't you go and lock up your gangster friends? Unless your job is deemed an essential service by contract, Marlene and her band of shithounds can't tell you anything. Want to lock up people for wrongdoing, Marlene? Lock up yourself and your boyfriend for Calabar Foundation. Remember that? And the, and the, the still, the still unanswered funds, Marlene? You remember that? You want to lock up people? Lock yourself up. Turn around Tobago. All of us. I see people come on to the live video who have been giving of their life and their time. Sacrificing. When we talk about it, eh, you don't realize how much time that you've given up. Every sacrifice, every day, every opportunity. But it, it costs a lot. It costs a lot. And, and you know what we need? We need everybody to respect themselves. Respect the effort. Respect their country. Respect your loved ones. Respect your mommy and your daddy. Respect your brother and your sister. Respect your children. Respect your friends. Respect your co-workers and stand up. Stand up. Stand together. Show them. Show them. No economic hitman strategy is working with you. Show them. You're not going to be divided over trinkets and baubles. Show them. We're not interested in race politics anymore. All we want from what happens in that parliament is representation of the people. And that is why our march is called a march for proper representation. The United States of America, Trinidadians speak of it without understanding that the United States of America, its declaration of independence, was an act of war against the king. It is written, it is named, now it sounds fancy. You're reading it on this side of history. But then, that was land that the king considered his. That was his land. That was his, it's like you go London and declare London independent. That's act of war. That's what they did in the colonies, the 13 colonies. That's the declaration of independence was an act of war. It was defiance. And you know why? Because there were years of back and forth over representation. It is because of a lack of proper representation from the king. Laws and taxation, and they said taxation without representation, unacceptable. The king did not understand that he had a responsibility to the colonies that in exchange for him getting to live well off of the bounty of the colonies, he was supposed to provide them with basic representation. And they did not get it, and they declared themselves independent. They went to war. There was a war of independence. They stood their ground. They stood their ground. And, and, and the Americans as bad talk France for what France did in World War II. If it wasn't for France during the American Revolution, they would not succeed. The French people intercepted the British fleet and prevented them from storming the colonies. But all of this history behind us, the point I'm trying to make is 
Roger Chen, the Boston Tea Party wasn't where it started. The Boston Tea Party was actually a precipitation and what caused the war. But when the king tried to implement a tax that the colony, colonists thought was ridiculous, Benjamin Franklin went to the king and told him they're not going to accept that tax. And the king withdrew the tax and put another tax that was a bigger tax to prove a point. And that's when they went, that's when they stormed the ships and threw the king's tea in the water. And that is, yeah, that is when from there it was war. But the Declaration of Independence, 1812 France saved them too. Yeah, that's true. And people need to know the history, you know. And I don't understand why we just, because I want to tell you something. Eh? History is one of the sexiest things that you can research, you know, because they have a saying that those who don't learn from history condemn to relive it. We in Trinidad and Tobago have been living in a hijack situation. We've all been victims of our government since 1962. While they've corralled us and abused us, taken advantage of us, divided us, elevated some and pressed heels on the necks of others, they stole from the people. They stole your grandparents. If your grandparents died in poverty, thank Eric Williams. If your parents died in poverty, thank Eric Williams. If you still don't own a home, thank Williams, Robinson, yes Robinson, Pandey, Manning, Kamala, Rowley. Because none of them have ever cared about the people of this country. I want to tell you something. The Prime Minister's first job is to make sure that the basic needs of all citizens are met. Affordable food, shelter, air, water. Those things, basic necessities. Then, security, education, healthcare, those things. We've never had that. We've had stunting and pontificating and, and, and posturing and bacchanal and noise and he thief and she thief bullshit that never benefited us. Not one of them was ever brought to justice. Not one. Not one. Rudal Bonilal stand up in the parliament and talk about the price the Chinley family get pay one for. And that didn't change nothing. You watch AV oil get accused of a hundred million dollars in fake oil and all kind of stunt and meandering. And not yet, not yet is it looking like anything like, you see when the small man, when they know and they go on looking for him because they see the camera and he thief two ten corn beef and a bag of crates, he trouble. But if you thief a hundred million dollars worth of oil, you're okay. And that is the madness of this country. The Prime Minister's job now is jobs. Not Subway, KFC, Royal Castle, Amalgamated Security. That's not jobs. Real jobs. Jobs that people could turn into careers, lifelong learning, contribution. Not standing up in, in front of somebody's store selling cloth and tongue. That is not a job. That is a hustle. There's a difference. Our people need education opportunities to prepare themselves primary school gives you primary education you could stop right there you don't have to go into secondary education primary education primary is supposed to teach you how to read and how to write that's important to function in society we say that that is primary education reading and writing you need to be able and to count you need to understand arithmetic and you can function. You can function. Most people never go beyond that. Secondary education is supposed to prepare you for a life and a career. It's supposed to give you the opportunity to go forward in a career. It's supposed to give you a platform from which you could either become an apprentice in any type of business and go through the ranks or you could go to university get more knowledge and come in at a higher level that's that's all education is for that's all it's for 
education must be tied to jobs. And we don't do that in Trinidad and Tobago. We've had gate teaching people, giving them financing for all kind of madness. All gate should have done was identify the key economic diversification careers that we needed and given people who had a predisposition to those schools of knowledge and learning to pursue that path. Anything that was essential, anything that was essential to Trinidad and Tobago's development. There were a lot of people walking around out there with a degree for a degree sake because employers hire people to hire people who don't understand the hiring process. The hiring process is not how much you could have learned, you know. The hiring process is what you are capable of, what skill sets you bring that would contribute to the goals and the mission of the company. That's it. That's it. There were a lot of people who, and your parents pushed you through, get a degree, get a degree. So much degrees outside there now that a simple degree is no longer enough. You need a master's. Because now you need a master's. And I keep telling you, Tobago, you cannot become a master in any discipline in two years or three years. You cannot. I know people doing masters of law who've done their law degree, who've never stood a foot in a courtroom. And before you're supposed to be able to become a master at law, you should practice law. It should be a law, ironically, that you should practice 10 years of active law, at least, before pursuing your masters. Because you cannot be a master at any, I don't care which university give you the piece of paper? It's all bullshit. You've taken in knowledge that should have been built on experience. And if you do not have the experience, all you have is book learning and that can help you. That can help you. So what they're doing is, they're making education a benchmark by which you corral people into a job. Yeah, she capable of learning, he capable of learning. That doesn't help you as an employer. What helps you as an employer is what the person knows and what they can do. I'm telling you a fact, the richest men in the world, the people who changed the world for all of history, not one had a degree. Albert Einstein, tell you Albert Einstein. This is what Albert Einstein said. School failed me and I failed the school. It bored me. This is Albert Einstein. Eh? The teachers behave like Feldwebel sergeants. I wanted to learn what I wanted to know, but they wanted me to learn for the exam. What I hated most was the competitive system there, and especially sports. Because of this, I wasn't worth anything, and several times they suggested I leave. Albert Einstein. This was a Catholic school in Munich. I felt that my thirst for knowledge was being strangled by my teachers. Grades were their only measurement. How can a teacher understand youth with such a system? From the age of 12, I began to suspect authority and distrust teachers. Without Albert Einstein, the modern world that we have wouldn't exist. Wouldn't exist. And he's not the only one. There was, there was somebody who... When he was very young, um, his mother, I told you all this story already, I'll tell you again for those who didn't hear it. His mother was called to the school and it was the last day he ever went to school. And he was like 10 or 11 years old. And when they went home, his mother sat him down as a little boy and she said, the principal said that you can't come to school anymore. That you are too bright for the school. That they've taught you everything that they could teach you and that you know enough and that for you to continue to come would be a waste of your time and their time. And she told him that. And he went on to become a prolific inventor held for a long time, most patents in history 
invented in a lot of ways or was involved in a lot of ways the modern world that we take for granted. And when his mother died, going through her papers, he found a document addressed to his mother saying that your son, Mrs. Ederson, Thomas, is a blockhead. He is incapable of learning and there is nothing more we could do for him. We suggest that you take him out of school. Thomas Edison went on to become one of the most prolific inventors. Read Henry Ford's story. Read Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs would have gone on to become somebody's difficult employee. You're a difficult son of a bitch. But the people who have the capacity to change the world are usually, they'd say, they, they, they have this thing, this is for the troublemakers, those who believe. And it's true. Society has been developed, has developed itself into turning people into employees. That's not where we need to go. If Steve Jobs did not drop out of university, the modern world we have now, iPhone and, and I mean, he revolutionized the music industry, the film industry, the computer industry. If Steve Jobs didn't drop out of school, you know why on your computer there are fonts? Steve Jobs used to sleep in the school because he was, for all intents and purposes, homeless. He used to work on an apple orchard. That's where the apple logo came from. That's where he used to work and he used to live on apples. And he used to sleep in the school. And he used to sleep in classes. But one of the classes that he enjoyed was the calligraphy class. And he enjoyed the calligraphy class and learning all the different ways they were to write letters. And it is because of that fonts were added as a by the way to computers. Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg, the, the, um, the, this boy, these boys who, um, who gave us Google. When Google was invented, created, I'm trying to remember the name, eh? Larry Page and Sergey Brin. They were PhD students at Stanford when they came up with the idea of using algorithms for search. And they went to the owner of Alta Vista, the number three search engine at the time. Yahoo was number one. Those of you who don't know, Yahoo pretty much invented search. MSN search came after Microsoft. Yahoo pretty much invented search. Alta Vista, there was a time when there were a lot of search engines, Ask Jeeves and all kind of craziness. Alta Vista, the owner, when these two boys went to him, they went to sell him Google for one million dollars. And he said to them, all the search engines that the world will ever need already exist. They went on to become the largest company in history. It was just overtaken by Apple. By Apple. Look at the world now. Look at who runs the world now. These same people hire the PhDs, but they built the road. Look at who runs the world now. Airbnb, they don't own a single room. That is the largest hotel organization in the world. Uber, don't own a single car. And that is the largest transport company in the world. Some of these things you hear it. When, when um, Napster was invented, the guy who invented Napster, he just wanted to share music with his friends. Zuckerberg, who invented Facebook. MySpace was the 800 pound gorilla already. MySpace had existed. Nobody thought that there would be any reason to try to do anything else because MySpace existed. Facebook never even got a proper name. Facebook was the working title. Listen to the name. Facebook. It doesn't make any sense. A Google is the largest number possible. That's why Google is called Google. But, but Facebook was just the, the, the title. Zuckerberg, what Zuckerberg and two friends was working on. 
They were nerds, and it was a way to get information about girls in universities close by. That's all Facebook was for. That's all Facebook was for. When Napster was created, it caused a war because the record companies had to fight Napster. But by the time they won that case, different versions were popping up. And it is when the iPod was launched. Steve Jobs, because he likes to do end-to-end, -end, unlike Microsoft, who was only interested in writing software for other people's computers, Steve Jobs wanted the hardware and the software to work seamless. So iTunes was created, and he made a deal with them. And he made a deal with them to pay them cents. But they were getting money for file sharing rather than Napster and all of them just stealing it. So they made a deal with iTunes. And iTunes is the largest peer sharing and music selling industry in the world. And that's a division of Apple. That is a division of Apple. The iPhone killed so many um, industries. And in my lifetime, when I was growing up, we used to listen to music on cassettes and records. And in my lifetime, all of that gave way to CDs. And in less than 10 years, an entire industry, the compact disc industry, that set up CD stores, an entire industry. I watched Blockbuster come and go. Netflix take it and gone. All of that. And, and I'm trying to say to you that you cannot, do not allow anybody to dictate to you what you can do. Or, or every artist out there to get paid. Somebody just put iTunes screws every artist. That's the deal that was made at the time. That's the deal that was made at the time. It made sense then. It made sense then. Yeah, Amazon. Amazon was never supposed to make a profit. Bezos had said that for decades it wasn't going to make a profit. But we all over the place. The point, I guess, that I want to make in all of this is that if you do not have people with vision leading your country, your people for all of their potential will become Subway sandwich makers, KFC dinner box packers, and amalgamated security baton twirlers. I watched people in my lifetime. I watched people who had no hope. I could call names. I could call names, Kerwin Sky, Venetian, Verena Siblal. I watched them all go on to just get a chance out of Trinidad and Tobago. I watched Densi Shepherd. She and her daughter, now a magazine publishers, they were featured on, on, on American television. I had to tell them, a training partner in the gym, we have no concept of who we are and what we're capable of. Every now and then, we will get a glimpse through Onika Maraj, who became Nikki Minaj. We want to share pictures of the girl when she was young. Like somehow, that ties her to who she is. And those of you walking around thinking that the past equals the future, you will take that to your grave. Because trust me, you don't even know your potential. The joke is KFC. Colonel Sanders was a real colonel. And he couldn't live on his army salary. And he used to sell his mother chicken recipe to gas stations. Secret recipe. He was in his 60s. He couldn't live on his pension when KFC was Kentucky Fried Chicken was born. And I don't want to get anybody into an argument about who they are or where they're trying to go. I'm just saying, we, we in Trinidad and Tobago have never had a government that had a vision for the people. The Progressive Empowerment Party tells you and people it's hard for the people of Trinidad to believe we've been living in Alice's Wonderland for so long 
that we don't believe that there's anything outside. We like the, we, I tell you, we like Plato's allegory of the cave. We're trapped in the cave. Eric Williams, George Chambers, Ian e. Robinson, Patrick Manning, Basleo Pandey, Kamala Pasal, Mrs. and now Keith Rowley. Because all the shit Kamala want to talk. She had five years to fix Petrotrain. Wasa, Nepte, TSTT, B-Mobile, T... What, what happened? How all of a sudden you have information? And I ask that of all her ministers. You all have plenty talk to talk now. You had office. But still Pandey, all over the world, all over the street, have all the answers. You had office twice. And like Rowley, Basdeo Pandey, all you wanted to do was go and play golf. All you all talk. The people have to see you all for who you are. Because to put any of you all back in office is to just waste more time. Waste this country to nothing. We practically down to nothing. The Progressive Empowerment Party, these are real policies. Home ownership for all. Not through the HDC or any national housing authority, but by making sure that everyone who has a job qualifies for financing. And that by making sure all small contractors who would like to become real estate developers, who would like to partner with the government and build starter homes at $100,000 tax-free, duty-free, VAT-free, stamp duty-free, so that Starter so that families now starting out, the government can offer all first time homeowners that exist every single person who's on the HDC list now. You could set aside just five million dollars, just five million dollars to secure finance for all of them to qualify. That if you have, because if you offer a hundred thousand dollars starter home to to um, minimum wage earners at zero deposit, zero interest for 30 years, even though they are only earning $2,250 a month, the mortgage installment on $100,000 at zero deposit, zero interest for 30 years is $477. A month. So imagine a husband and a wife and their young family starting out in a country where the government understands housing for all doesn't mean that the government has to build ghetto complexes. Housing for all means the government facilitate housing development for starter homes and it facilitates that all of the people who have a job that want to own a home can. When we say normal lending criteria apply, if you do not pay your mortgage payment, you will lose the home. That's how it's supposed to be done. That's how it was supposed to be done. Rishi Ali, don't let them chain you up na partner. Karani didn't only have to grow sugar. Karani was a farming complex that could have grown peppers, it could have grown cocoa, it could have grown sugar, it could have grown breadfruit, zaboka. Mexico earns 1.5 billion US dollars a year shipping zaboka to America. We could be in the zaboka business and our pollock zaboka plenty better than what Mexico grows. If you make sure that your people could own a home, then you could save endless money on national security because everybody come from somewhere and the family is the crucible of development in the country. If you right size the family, right size the neighborhood, fix the communities, you fix the whole country because our country is a collection of communities. We tire tell you that. And all of our policies are built on like a rising tide, lifting all boats, all families, all individuals, once you have a job and you want to own a home, you can. A nation of homeowners crying dies. Look around the world. We would then be able to throw away all them jail and court and all that bullshit. But we can't, not right now, because our people are struggling to survive. They're fighting each other. They're fighting the state just to live. That's what's going on. It's not that people wake up in the morning and just gone mad and gone bad. They have no hope. 
And we who judge them so callously, so easily, should be ashamed. My father taught me something when I was a little boy. Don't judge. Remember, there you go, but for the grace of God. And I love that saying, because random chance, the universe shit pits luck. And that is me. The government's job is to make sure that everybody who has a job could own a home. The government's job is to make sure that everybody who wants a job could have a job. The government's job is to make sure that everybody who has a job that wants to develop themselves to have a better job can. That is the government's job. The government's job is to, is to make sure that every farmer who wants a chance to grow food can. The government's job is to make sure that, that food, once grown, can be shared and sold to the people who will consume it here at the best, cheapest possible price so that we keep the cost of food down and the farmers still get to make money. And that's the government's job. You see things like crime plan? You don't need a crime plan if your people not committing crime. But we've never had a government that understood that. We've kept voting. Morgan Job said, vacuous and inane, intellectually bankrupt individuals into government. They don't have a cohesive thought between them. These policies, I tell you, that other people copying and pasting and trying to pass as their own. It's 10 years now I'm working on it. It's 10 years of interviewing people all over the world. 10 years of sitting with people whose job it was to understand their profession and to look at the problem and find a solution. We've solved water, we've solved flooding, we've solved corruption, we've solved the management of the constituencies, we've solved government. There's a book and, it, and I have to finish it and publish it so that all of Trinidad can have it reboot the Republic. The Common Sense Guide to Reinventing Trinidad and Tobago. It's all simple and it's all easy to understand. Our port doesn't have to lose a billion dollars a year, but it does because thieves need to eat. That is, the, that is the real crime in Trinidad and Tobago. From the budget and everywhere it goes, that's the real criminal enterprise in Trinidad and Tobago. Not this small man on the ground who's fighting to survive and making some bad choices to do it. Vishal Bonnie said publish it soon. It's like 90% finished. And if I stay quiet for about a month, I could publish it. Because it's that close to finishing. Greed has destroyed this country. Avarice and greed has destroyed this Trinidad and Tobago. Avarice and greed has destroyed culture. Avarice and greed have destroyed sports. We make some of the best sportsmen and women in the world. Some of the best entertainers in the world. We have some of the best artists in the world. In Trinidad and Tobago, fashion designers. We have some of the best. We stunt it. We play for stunt. We not interested in substance. I remember a joke when I was small. The difference between F-A-R-T and S-H-I-T is that both smell bad but one have substance. And we in Trinidad and Tobago have never understood the responsibility of the citizens in a democracy and the role of the government. We've encapsulated it into one sentence, and I say it all the time, that the well-being of the citizens is the function, reason, and purpose of government. Without that, without having to look after the people, government have no job. There is no other reason for a government. There's no other purpose for a government. The government is not boat buyers. The government is not arbitrary taxers. Call them, but as a jackass. Keith Rowley is a jackass. Stuart Young is a stunting jackass. There is not one single person in this government that I respect. Not one. Not them, not their thoughts, not their abilities, not their capacities, not their track records. Nothing. I trust none. I respect not one in the entire parliament. There has never been a single member of parliament, member of any government that has done anything in this country that we could say of that, I am truly proud. Not one. 
No one has had a vision for the country. No one has had a vision for the people. No one has tried to define what it means to be a Trimbegonian. No one. We took Calypso and we turned it on its ass and used it for political noise. We took steel man and prostituted it to the point where we don't know what the hell we're doing with it. So Pan Trimbego has used it once for the air and milk it. The rest of the world gone with it. We've taken every blessing that we've had and screwed it over. The pitch lake, the nylon pool, the, we had the largest brain coral in the world that dead. I mean, we really, 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 us as people, I mean, seriously, are not proud at all, you know. I'm really not proud at all. And we could do better. We should do better. Can we do better? When I tell people that Keith Rowley has to be fired, they tell me, give him a chance. Give him a chance at what? What has he done in the three years that he's been in office that tells you he deserves a chance? Well, he fixed the economy, Kamala, Kamala Thief. When you go to Kamala, Kamala say, well, well, it's really Manning who thief. And you run back, back, and you reach back by the PNL. And the Manning say, no, it's Pandey. Pandey say, no, it's Manning. And you're like an ass, not realizing it's all of them. The PLM and the UNC are flunkies and functionaries of an oligarchy. And that's a big word for a group of businessmen who realize that politicians in Trinidad and Tobago are easy to fool. Especially if you're skin white. Because you see, we grow up looking, our dark skinned brothers and sisters have been conned into thinking that if you're light, you're all right. And, and, and little girl children, mother telling them, marry a man with good hair. That bullshit has divided and mashed up this country. We don't even understand what we are, who we are, where we're going. We don't know. Everybody in Chile and Tobago hustling till they did, looking for a payday. That's why Lotto and Playway laughing at the people. Lotto and Playway make so much money off of the stupidity of our people because any lottery is a tax on people who are not good at math. It's not possible. We have so many casinos now. People literally working hard for a salary to go and hand to casino owners because you could never be the house. No matter who you think you are or what you're capable of doing, you can't be the house. Casinos don't lose. They don't lose. Lotto can't lose. My position, and I keep saying this, is to inform, educate, and empower for as long as I could. I said on the 10th of October, 2008, when I, when I was lying on a hospital bed, St. Clair Medical Center, recovering from a very bad accident, I said I'd give Trinidad 10 Four years of my life contribute to the development of Trinidad and Tobago. Along the way, we developed a lot of stuff and accomplished a lot of stuff. Made things happen. And I said 10 years. And this October, weeks from now, is the anniversary of that promise. And I keep saying that I do not want any public office. And people think that your leaders must be trying to take from you <clears throat> to justify leading you. That's foolishness. Real leaders lead from behind. Real leaders lead from in the pack. Real leaders lead from on the ground. If I were Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago, I wouldn't want a salary. I wouldn't need one. If I were Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago, I wouldn't want 15 police outriders. If I couldn't live in a country where everybody believed that I had their best interests at heart and I was working for everybody to have a better life, if I couldn't be among the people, I don't want that job. I don't want that job. 
I hate the whole stunt artist way prime ministers behave in this country. If there is one thing I despised about Kamala Prasad Misesa, is this empress idea she get in her head. That she would show up at meetings when somebody was speaking. And the DJ was, ah, oh, Kamala Reach, throw a song, throw a song, they pick a song, walk out through the crowd, waving, shaking hands, disrespecting the person speaking on the platform. And the person speaking on the platform, so devoid of self-respect that they will stand up there and tolerate that bullshit. And I always wondered, if you have a meeting, why you can't just show up? Why you have to stunt every time? Is that all you bring to the table? A stunt? Why are no politicians talking to the people? Keith Rowley came and tried a live video, a live broadcast, teleprompted to bullshit you. And the whole country saw through the bullshit. Everybody rejected what he said. Even diehard PNM people finding it difficult to consider themselves PNM people now. And it is because of that. Why are, and I'm saying this to you, ask those who want your vote to talk to you. When people come around, walking around to shake your hand election time, ask them, what is your housing policy? What is your food policy? What is your jobs policy? What is your education policy? What is your water policy? Ask those questions of your member of parliament because he or she supposed to know. They're supposed to have an idea. They're going to represent you on these critical issues in the parliament, possibly in the government. And if you don't know, and if they don't know, everybody wasting their time. This conversation that we have here Tell Kamala Prasad Bisesa and Rudal Modilal and everybody else in the UNC and Rowley and Imbo, you see they're going to stunt for you with the internal elections. Tell them, talk to us. We demand to know what the plans are and not just the plans. We need the budgets. We need the timelines. We need, to be, we need you to say to us that education will accomplish these benchmarks in six months, 12 months, 18 months, 24 months. Healthcare will accomplish these benchmarks. Food production and distribution, these benchmarks. Home ownership, these benchmarks. National security, these benchmarks. Six months, 12 months, 18 months, 24 months. So that you know that six months from now, these things are supposed to be accomplished in these critical ministries. And if they have not been accomplished, fire the government. Fire the government. Because that's what the government's job is. Don't waste five years of your children's life in an education system that is failing them. If the Minister of Education doesn't understand his job, fire him. Fire all. Start over. Start it over. It is time now that we, the people of Trinidad and Tobago, stood together as one people under one flag. This Friday morning, I tell you this, we are running out of time. Trinidad is in chaos. This country is like a tinderbox. Watch what's going on. We have few opportunities left to right size and rescue this country. And I want to say this to Trinidad and Tobago. Friday morning, 10 o'clock, is your opportunity. Friday morning, 10 o'clock, meet us at PEP. Do not follow people who have no plan, no track record, no commitment, no substance. There are plenty of political parties with logos and videos and no idea of how to run a country. Forget the politics. Focus on the governance. Ask them, how will you deal with human trafficking? How will you deal with the 30,000 illegal guns in this country? How will you manage at the constituency level? What will budgeting look like under you? 
what will the tenders process for national and state procurement look like under you? How will you guarantee proper jobs? Listen, you and everybody looking on, everybody in the conversation, I believe that you are all capable of having a sensible conversation. And I think that more than any bacchanal and noise right now, we need to get together as one people and say, listen, all we want from that parliament is representation of the people. All we want from the government is service. If we can't get it, it is time to fire all of you. This don't have to be malice or ill will, you know. This have to be, if you hire somebody as a carpenter, as a mason, as a house cleaner, as a car washer, if they're not doing the job you hire them for, will you continue or will you fire them and get somebody else? And that's the answer right there. Wasting five years behind a government that is doing nothing for the country is an exercise in futility and foolishness. Our people need jobs, real jobs. The government should have been focusing. I told Keith Rowley, I told Keith Rowley in his first, after his first address, make jobs job one. Because once everybody came fully employed and have hope and opportunity on that collective passion, you could build the entire country, drive the national economy. Once everybody believes that they have a chance and a stake in this country, give them the opportunity to own a home. Do whatever you could, not ghetto complexes. Stop using the HTC as get rich schemes for your friends and your finances and your family. Let people build their own homes but make sure they can access the financing. Anyway, we've had all of these conversations for a long time. What I wanna ask you right now is, we are having, we are gathering this Friday, and I want you to focus on that. We are gathering this Friday morning at 10 o'clock at 19 Stanmore Avenue. Tell your friends, tell your family, there's an event, there are posters, there are graphics, share anything you want, copy and paste, take what you want. This is where we are and this is where we have to go as a nation if we cannot unite if we cannot unite as one people and stand up for our country we ain't going nowhere mark that that is the absolute truth if we cannot get past the division in this country and stand together we ain't going nowhere Into. Yeah, I think that right now this needs to be a sober time in China and Tobago. I am not going to be involving myself in any foolishness. I'm not going to be encouraging anybody in any kind of bacchanal, any kind of old noise. What we need to do is come together as one Trinbagonian family. That's the first step, you know. Everything that you need from there will happen once we can do that. If we can't do that, we, ain't, we have nowhere to go. Plain talk. Trinidad and Tobago. The country that we want is on the other side of the choices that we make. Straight up. And don't get truer than that. Some people might think that right now, we need to be making noise and getting on in the street. I don't agree. I think that now our solution is in us coming together. And we need to do that. We are wearing orange on Friday, but you could wear your colors. You could wear national colors. We are meeting 19 Stanmore Avenue. I am leaving you with this one.
had a sticker pin because I totally exhausted. These are long days. We have a lot of stuff going on. We're sorting out and building out and getting everything ready. All of you who would like to be part of the teams and building the party, reach out, message. We'll put you on to any, put you on to the right people. If you want to join peptrinbago at gmail.com, peptt.com. We have an app, PEP, APP, -E as the PEP app is free to download, 347-4PEP, or just message me and I'll put you on to the people. If you want to join the party, just send me in one paragraph your name, your constituency, your phone number, and your email address, and the right people will get on to you. Yeah? Um, we have uh, merchandise for sale. It's on sale now in Shawanas. I want to give you that address. We have our first venue besides PEP headquarters for the purchase of PEP merchandise, cups, mugs, t-shirts, banners, and it's at JC Men at 52 Penco Street, Montrose, Shawanas. And you could get all pep merchandise there. And if you have a store and you would like to sell pep merchandise, reach out to Satish Ramsaran, or you could just message me and I'll put you on to Satish. Yeah, Kevon says, send me a shirt. Kevon, unlike the other parties, we have no deep pocket finances. We sell our merchandise at good prices and we use it as fundraising for the party. So uh, I hope you follow that comment with, I would like to buy a shirt. Because gladly we will take the time to get one to you. Yeah? So until we speak again tomorrow, Trinidad and Tobago, mobilize yourself. Get ready for Friday. It is going to be the start of real democracy in TNT. Stay safe, Trinidad and Tobago.